um, go back in time with me for a second and think about the internet 10 years ago. In 2004, Facebook had just launched. YouTube would launch one year later. I mean, think about video streaming and download times back before YouTube. Now it's 10 years later. Um, uh, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't video someone. You couldn't um, uh, stream videos when you're in your car, in, you know, on a train. Um, you weren't connected everywhere you go. Now you can FaceTime anywhere. I, I swear to you, if I can't watch Netflix in an airplane, I'm like, what? What kind of, what kind of crappy country? <laughs> it's crazy. The next 10 years, exponentially more impressive. And the Internet is at the center of everything we say and do. And it will also be more dangerous than ever. When I saw the, uh, the fact that the Commerce Department last week said that it's going to give the international group all of the IP information that we have, give away basically the rights to the Internet, I was floored. What, what do you think freedom of speech is going to be like? when this happens. Um, we have uh, Steve Del Blanchio on. He is um, the executive director of NetChoice. Steve, um, please tell me that I'm making this into my, in my own head much worse than I think it is. Glenn, don't panic yet. This okay. is really not a political or even a partisan issue. And uh, the great innovation of the internet, right? The commerce, the communications, the free expression and the innovation. That's something the U.S. invented and to you know, many extent I'd say we perfected it. But long ago we gave it to the world. And the entire world is using the Internet as an engine for commerce and change. But after we gave the technology to the world and they've all employed it, we did retain a little bit of legacy control over what happens at the domain name system. Now domain name system of course are those names with dots in between them right so as netchoice.org is my website domain name and if you were going to email me at sdelbianco at netchoice.org you use a domain name so you're all used to .org, .com, .net, right. .gov, .us. That's the domain name system. Right. There you go. And, 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 that's, and that's the control, the legacy control that the US government Here's what decided I'm last Friday that it was going to give up. Right and that sounds like it's no big deal. Here's my concern and, and please tell me I'm wrong that um, I think it was in your op-ed that talked about China and Russia possibly gaining um, control of this. Um, what, the heck, what the heck happens if dictators or thugs game this system? What happens to our freedom of speech? Yeah, the Commerce Department uh, announced Friday that it would not try to transition this contract to a body like the United Nations or a body like a lot of governments. And that's reassuring, right? But the trick is it's likely to go to ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. And that's a group the U.S. established back in 1998. Private sector is part of that, news media is part of that, civil society, but so are governments. So governments participate and have a growing voice at ICANN. And I think that there's at least a fair amount of concern that once governments gain control over the internet route, as it is, these top-level domains, there's a chance that some governments could really start to use it to suppress free expression. So in other words, it's not one of my major concerns. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I said it wasn't one of my top concerns. I'm much more concerned about making sure that the private sector still has a lot to say about the policies we use for the domain name system. But there's a fair amount of speculation. If, in fact, uh, a majority of governments object to the way free expression is happening on the web in a way that's critical of a government, we could see them crack down and pressure ICANN. I can give you an example, Glenn. Uh, let's suppose one of the new top-level domains that are coming out this year, there's almost a thousand of them, .baby, .bingo, .broker, .bank, .books, .kids, mm -hmm. .cash, and one of them is called .exposed. So let's suppose that somebody lights up a website called Putin.exposed, and fills it with uh, photographs and content about the Russian regime, what they're doing in Ukraine, maybe some things about alleged corruption in Russia. Well, the Russian president's not going to be happy about that. And sure enough, in today's world, he can simply suppress that website within Russia's borders. But there's nothing he could do today, Glenn, to shut it down on a global basis. Now, fast forward to 2015. ICANN is controlling the top-level domain. That means ICANN controls dot expose. And if President Putin is still in power, and he can convince the majority of governments to agree with him, 
They can pressure ICANN to say that no president's name could be used in a domain name without that mm -hmm. president's permission. Sounds reasonable, right, Glenn? And that the leverage they would have at that point could well shut down the .exposed website if, unless they decided to take down Putin.exposed. Okay. So today, the U.S. government maintains this contractual leverage, and this administration has actually done a stellar job of exerting that leverage at just the right time to preserve a private sector role and to protect free expression. Okay. But once we let go of that contract, who's, who's going to play the role right. of the U.S. government today? Uh, and it will only deteriorate from there. Um, Steve, I thank you very much for, uh, for the work that you're doing and um, for um, trying to explain this a bit. I don't know if I really feel any better or not, but I appreciate your work.